This video will go over some of my favorite Chrome extensions and so you can decide if you find them helpful or not. Um, once you complete this PD, I will send you the link to this sheet that I'm using today so you have a link to all of the Chrome Store um, links to add them to your Chrome if you want to and then the explanations beside them and just for you to keep for future reference. So just a little um, note about Chrome extensions. They're awesome and I love them. Um, however, I do need to, you know, say if you have a lot of them open and running at the same time, it can slow your, your browser down. So if you feel like your Chrome is lagging a little bit and you're not sure why, you might check to see if you have a lot of Chrome extensions that are enabled, but you're not using them at the time. And you can just disable them and that keeps them from running in the background, but it doesn't remove them from your Chrome. So just kind of keep that in mind. And I'll talk a little bit about that later as we go through. So the first one on the list, and this is in no particular order. This isn't in order of my favorites. It's just as I thought of them, I threw them on here. So the first one is Crafty Cursor. So if you do a lot of videos for Screencastify or YouTube and, and you're demonstrating things and you want your cursor to be able to be followed, Crafty Cursor is pretty cool. So I'm going to show you kind of how it works and you definitely want it disabled if you're not using it because it would drive you crazy. So crafty cursor um, and, and this is new. You can now choose a color. When I first started using this, you couldn't, but now you can choose from a few colors. So um, start highlighting. And so now everywhere I pull my mouse, I have this um, little orange, uh, yellow circle following me around. So again, you can understand how if you're demonstrating how to do something in a screencastify this would be super helpful um but that's what crafty cursor is so that one is pretty cool so again you definitely don't want that one on all the time so i'm gonna stop highlighting okay so there is that that's crafty cursor the next one is draft back draft back plays back a revision history in a google doc um, one little thing about that one is you have to have editing rights to it to be able to do it. Um, it's kind of neat if you suspect a student maybe has just copied and pasted a lot of a paper they had to write or something like that instead of actually writing it themselves. You can see that easily with draft back. So I'm going to uh, show you how what that looks like. So this is a Google Doc that I have editing rights to. Okay, so here it is, and I'm going to click, um, when you have the draft back extension enabled, you're going to see this little square up on your Google Doc that says draft back, and it also tells you how many times this document has been revised, so 188 revisions, which is kind of a lot, but this is a, um, I was getting ready for a uh, tech training, so I was just kind of free writing some ideas that I had, so I'm going to go ahead and play draft back, and... I'm gonna play, you get some options here. If you only have a few revisions, like this is a lot of revisions, but if you only have a few, you may not get all these options. So just kind of pay attention to whatever you're getting. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and you can watch it and you can actually see kind of my thought process as I'm going through here. And I'm, uh, I've got a lot of stuff going on at the bottom. This is, you. if this is too fast and you want to see it a little slower, you can play at actual speed and some different kind of options. But you can really see if this were a student's paper and you kind of wanted to see where they struggled and maybe got stuck or um, copied and pasted, you'll see a whole chunk just kind of land in there and they might change a few words around and make it their own. So you can really see that whole process, which is pretty cool. So that is draft back. I'm going to close that one and go back here. So that one is really cool. So Bitmo Bitmoji, I love them, right? They're so fun and um, having it as a Chrome extension and I actually leave this one enabled all the time because I actually use them a lot. Um, so yeah, Bitmoji is awesome. You just click it up here, you get your full Bitmoji library, you can search in here and when you find one that you like, you can right click on it it'll tell you. So if you just click on it, it'll tell you to right click. And so you can right click and you can save it or copy it or whatever. And you can just input it directly into whatever you're working on. So I use Canva a lot. If you want to put it in your um, 
in your Google Docs or your Google Slides. It's just a quick and easiest way for you to add your cute little Bitmoji. So I just love that one. So there it is. And that's one I leave enabled all the time. Okay, so honey is, this one is probably more personal maybe than professional, but if you do a lot of online shopping, like I do, um, and you get to the cart and it asks for a promo code all the time on every site that you're at. And sometimes I will, you know, go out and see if I can find one online. Honey does that for you. So if you're, it, and it kind of pops up when you get to the shopping cart place on your, on your checkout process and it'll say honey has found seven coupons and you just click you know check which one saves you the most money and it runs through all the coupon promo code options and it says use this one and you'll save the most money and it really works i use it all the time um so i highly recommend it of course when you're using you know shopping for school supplies right but anyway if you have that extension it does it automatically as soon as you get to that checkout it's amazing I love it. So check out Honey. The next one is Insert Learning. It's really a neat um, idea. Um, what it will do is you take any web page, right, that you go to. So if you go to one that has just informational, like a National Geographic page, or if you go to, um, I don't know, a, an article or something like that, you can actually insert use Insert Learning to put in questions and discussions right there into that website. Um, if you notice here in my notes, it does require you to create your class in Insert Learning account. So you create your account with Insert Learning, you create a class in there for whatever you're going to use it for because you do need to assign your Insert Learning to your students directly. So it has a little bit of work on, you know, kind of on the back side, and you have to create a class. But what it does is really cool. So let me go, let me try to find, um, I like Newzella a lot. So although Newzella kind of has their own quizzes uh, built in, but it's just a good site to go to. If you don't use Newzella, you should try it. It has really great articles. You can change the Lexile numbers. So, you, or, so for differentiation, you can have the same article, but kind of at different reading levels. It's really neat. And a lot of them have built-in quizzes at the bottom. So that's just bonus information for Newzella. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll just see what this article is. I have not read this or <laughs> proved it or anything. Okay, so here is an article, right, about NATO and the Russia-Ukraine crisis. So I'm going to go over here to my extensions and choose Insert Learning. And now I have this little um, menu on the side. So what I can do is I can highlight text. So if there's something in this that you want kids to for sure, you know, pay attention to, like um, if you think this is really important, you can highlight that right? And so the kids know to pay attention to that. Or if you want to put a sticky note in there, you can do that as well. Um, so you can check that and go make sure to read this paragraph carefully. You can kind of guide your students through and help them pick out the uh, the important parts of it. You can add a question in there. So if you um, you want to put a question, and again, you select where you want it. So right after this, and um, you can, it has some ideas for you. So you can identify the main idea of this text or paraphrase the paraphrase the previous sentence so it kind of has some cookie cutter ones for you that are ready but if you um, want to do your own you can just type your question there so that's just really kind of cool um, and I can just imagine if you have whatever your subject matter is I know that you have a lot of your favorite articles and things like that and websites to go to so insert learning is just a really neat way to have it kind of all there for you um, I always kind of think in my mind for sub days because you still want that really good quality learning going on, but you're not there to do it. So I feel like insert learning would be a great 
tool for when you're not there with them, but you kind of have so much input into what they're doing. So I like it for that. I'm not sure it would be great for if you're in the classroom with them, you know, you could probably do something a little more engaging than this, but if you're not in there with them, but you still want to deliver that content with, you know, some kind of leading questions or to get them thinking in the direction that you want them to go, um, that this would be great for that. So it's really neat, um, really neat extension. And that is called insert learning. And there it is. And then when you're all finished with your little additions to it, you just would click, you know, to assign here, I'll go back to this. Um, here, here's a sign and I don't have any classes created, so it's not really going to go anywhere, but um, you would give it a title and then you would assign it. I don't have any classes, but it, then you would assign it to a class. So that's kind of how you would finish that out. <clears throat> okay, Screencastify, obviously um, you want, if you do a lot of videos like I do, or if you're leaving uh, a lot of things for your class, you want Screencastify as a Chrome extension. Um, mine is enabled all the time because I use it a lot and it's just right here this little pink arrow and you just I'm not going to click on it right now because I'm afraid it'll mess up this recording because I'm using Screencastify right now but you just click on it very few options because it's so simple but it really does everything that you need it to do and once you're finished recording then you have kind of more editing options to do with it but the initial just to record is super simple and our district has a premium subscription so please take advantage of that we want you know where our money's going we want it to be worth it to everybody so that means we want everybody to use it so please be using your screencastify and it's an awesome chrome extension to have right there for you Okay, I love this next one. It's a QR code generator. So I know that in Chrome, you can um, create one here. You can create a QR code. What I don't like about this one is it puts the little dinosaur in the middle. I don't know why that bugs me because it shouldn't. It doesn't matter, but it does bug me a little that the little dinosaur is in the middle. So if I use the one built into Chrome and click QR code, there it is. I don't know why it's just a personal thing so that one is not my favorite one to use qr code generator is my favorite one to use i believe i get a little there okay so here it is and if you click on it right there that's all you have to do and this site that i'm on is in a qr code i mean that's the easiest way you can you could snip this you can download it you can you know do whatever you want to with it I don't even know what to tell you except that this one is awesome. And I have on um, my sheet here to pin this one. And what that means is that you want the ones that you use most often pinned to your to the right of your, your Omni bar is what this is called, your little search bar. So the ones that aren't pinned are kind of hidden underneath and you do have to click this puzzle piece that shows you the rest of your extension. So all of these here that you see that I have, well, some of them are pinned, but I have a lot in here that are not pinned. So I have the ones that I use most often here and I pin them so that they're always there and I don't have to do that other search and go one level deeper, deeper to get them. So this QR code generator, I'm recommending you pin it because it's the quickest way to create a QR code I have ever seen, okay? Um, this next one is just kind of fun and I'm new to this, I will be honest, but it replaces a new tab. So which that means is every time you click a new tab, you know, and I, it probably defaults right now to a Google search page, which, and the reason I, I switched is because the Omnibox is a Google search, right? So all the time you don't really need a whole page to do that. So, um, this one, it just kind of is a feel good. You can have have it personalized. You can have a to-do list, little reminders. I'll show you what mine looks like now. So I'm going to hit plus. So when I hit for a new tab, this is what comes up. I, I love travel and every day it's a different beautiful landscape. Down here at the bottom it tells you where you're looking and it has all kinds of stuff that you can and I love that. You know sometimes you see these pictures like I wonder where that is. It doesn't really tell you. It just tells you it's a stock image. This tells you where it is. 
Um, it's got the weather up here for Benton. You can add other cities if you're kind of interested in the, in the weather at the time. If you've got links that you go to a lot and you're con you don't necessarily want them to start up on Chrome startup, I have four or five that I use daily that open when I start Chrome. But then I have several that I use almost all the time that I don't necessarily want to open up. So you can have, like I manage a couple spreadsheets for the district and I want, I use them a lot. Um, so I've got them set here and I, in one click, so I don't have to go searching um, my Google Drive for, for things, I have them right here. Um, your main focus today, you can set that. And so every time you open a new page, it's like a little reminder, like, hey, don't forget. And today mine is because I'm behind on PD videos. So um, I am setting my prime focus today is PD videos. So every time I open a new tab, if I'm getting distracted or something like that, it's going to go, hey, PD videos today. And it that's just, I love this. It's called Momentum. Um, you can also add, I'm move my head because there's also a little to-do list. If you want to add kind of more things like subsets of things to, for you to do today, you can do that down here in this bottom corner. So this is Momentum. Again, um, it's a great big clock in the middle, which I also love. Um, it's personalized, so you really feel like it's talking to you. I love the picture in the back. It's kind of relaxing to me. And so anyway, that's momentum. It's super fun. Um, I love it. All right. And here we go to page two. Okay. So Giphy for Chrome. This, I just love fun. This kind of is my Bitmoji and, and GIF uh, love. And it's right here. It's the easiest way to find a GIF. So if you click Giphy for Chrome here and you can just search for GIFs. Um, um, I was kind of looking for St. Patrick's Day earlier. Let's see what we've got. So here's all kinds of just cute gifts for St. Patrick's Day. They're super easy to just insert anywhere. Um, I just love them. And it's so easy. You don't have to get out of what you're in. If, if I wanted one in this Google Doc, I could just select and add it in here. I have this one pinned because, again, I'm kind of adding these in a lot. So I want them pretty close. So, um Oh, I do have a note here for this to work. Make sure you've updated your relay login. Um, so some things it's because of the filtering system that we use in the district, um, but they've made an update to it and teachers just have to kind of go through this update process. It's super simple. So to do that, I'm going to show you just go to the, the main district site and under staff. Let me move my head again. This relay login, you just click that. And I'm, I've already done it, but you would just type in your email address and your password that you use to log into everything and click sign in. And that's all you have to do. And that gets you onto the new updated relay, which kind of opens up some sites that were previously blocked. So if you find yourself um, having trouble with infinite campus or um, some sites aren't opening that you think should it's probably because you need to do this little relay update okay again super simple it's from the district site under staff okay and then go to relay login so and i'm saying this because my my giphy extension didn't work at first and it's because i hadn't done that yet so um, i went back and did that and it worked great So that is Giphy. All right, so Crafty Text is next. And if you notice this logo, it's by the same people as Crafty Cursor. Um, so Crafty Text, it's really a simple idea. It's really simple to use. And all it does, all it does is makes um, something big on your screen for someone to see. So if you have like a Paradeck code or a Nearpod code or any kind of code that students need to log into and you need them to see it really easily, um, I don't know, what if it's G7HRE? You know how they're kind of crazy. And then you just show display and there it is, big on your screen. This is all it does, you guys. Um, but it, I can totally see the use for it, right? Um, and then 
um, when you click off of it, it's just gone. It doesn't save it. It doesn't do anything special to it. You can do things like shorten um, and QR codes, but it's not my favorite for that. All I like it for, super simple, is just display something. So if you need to um, just put a note, don't forget your homework. And then display there. That's up on the screen. And if you need to just put it up there, a little quick note, and then you're walking around doing stuff, it's just on your screen. If you notice, like nothing changed in the background. It's just a really cute banner across the top. When you're finished with it and you're going back to work, you just click anywhere and uh, it goes away. So just kind of fun. I love it mostly for codes, obviously, if you're going to have kids, you know, turn something in. But I see a lot of other uses for it as well. Okay, so Extensity, since we're talking about Chrome extensions, once you have kind of a lot of Chrome extensions, they become a little, maybe overwhelming, a little cluttered. And you definitely don't want a bunch of them up here because then it gets really cluttered. So be kind of picky about which ones you pin to your Omnibar up here. But Extensity is... Here it is. And if you know, I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that if you have a lot of Chrome extensions running at the same time and you're not really using them, it can slow your Chrome browser down. So Extensity is great. It kind of is a, it houses all of your extensions and it's a quick way to disable them so you don't have to go find them and click and disable. So this is a really quick way to turn them off, the ones that you're not using. So I'm not using Crafty Cursor right now. And if you notice, that just dimmed it, right? And I'm not using Crafty Text right now, so that just dimmed it. So it's disabling them, but it's not removing them from my Chrome. It's right here in one quick place. And um, I find it easier to use than, than the Manage Extensions options that are in there for you. So that's really all. Um, Extensity does, if you notice, it quickly enables or disables your Chrome extensions, which you want to do if you're not using them. Keeps your browser um, lean and fast and then keeps your toolbar clean, right? So you don't want a bunch of clutter up here. And also, Honey, that I mentioned, it's dim right now, but if I were to go to um, online shopping and popped up, it only pops up when I go to a shopping cart and I'm ready to check out, then Honey pops up. It's awesome. All right. The last one that I'm going to go over with you is called Mercury Reader. So if you have a news article and it's a great article, but it is totally cluttered with ads and, and yuck and you know how all that stuff is. So let me see if I can find an article. I don't know. Russia, Ukraine conflict article. Surely there's something out there. Um, okay, we'll try. Let's see what the BBC looks like. Okay, so let's say you wanted to share this with students. Maybe you want to have it in a PDF and attach it to Otis or something like that. Um, and so here it is, right? You have all this extra stuff. You have this kind of crud on the side. If you're going down, the BBC is probably not as bad on, on ads as some other things are. But anyway, this will work. So Mercury Reader is, it's this little rocket here. I think I just turned it off. Well, it's not turning on. refreshing. I don't know why my Mercury Reader isn't popping on. Okay. I'm not patient. So not patient. Okay, so here it is. It pulls it out into this lovely little sheet. Um, if you scroll on down, the pictures are still there, which are so helpful at times, but if you notice, all the other distractions from the site are not there. Um, the map stayed, so it's really awesome um, if you want just a clean article to share with students. So here it is in this beautiful version. Um, you could actually share the link because it's been changed, you know, 
or you can uh, download it. Um, you can kind of change some text size if you have a student with a vision problem or something like that. You can change the font and you can kind of add a theme to it. So anyway, Mercury Reader is a great quick extension to clean up articles so that it, it takes away all the distractions and ads and, and things like that for the students and it gets it share ready, right? You can just send this out and it's nice and neat and everything the kids need to know. All right, so those are some of my favorites. I hope this was helpful to you all. Uh, like I said, when you finish the Edpuzzle, I'll send you the link so that you have the sheet. And um, so you can go to the <clears throat> Chrome, Chrome store and get the ones that you want. As always, if you need anything, let me know. And if you have a favorite Chrome extension that I didn't mention today, let me know. Maybe I'm missing out on one. Thank you, guys.